I'm gonna gather up some oak leaves because uh, today we're gonna make some new enclosures for our rhino roaches so that it's just two roaches per container, male and female. Hopefully they'll do their business and uh, have some babies in the spring. Here are some rhino roaches. Hoping that these will breed in May. Nice big male there. Rhino roaches, they live 10 years. And how, when were they born? These ones were born, oh man. May 2018. Is that right? Yeah. Is it written on the container? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these were captive bred by some other rhino roaches that I had. These are their offspring. And uh, what is that, seven years ago. And they're finally mature. And my Thanksgiving cactus is blooming. It was given to my mother the year I was born. That was a minute ago. What are you doing, Kelsey? Scrunching up their leaves so that they can eat. Makes it a little easier for them to get in at the edge. It reminds me of Thoreau and the oxen. These roaches have grown entirely on a diet of oak leaves. We do supplement them with some other things, but it actually isn't right necessary. There. There's a carrot that they didn't eat. It only counts as a supplement if they actually eat it. Well, we don't know <laughs> how many were in here to begin with. No, I have no idea. Kelsey has done a wonderful job taking over the care of many things that I historically just took care of myself. Let's see one of those rhino roaches in your hand. Pick the biggest one and and use your smallest hand so people are really <laughs> impressed. There might be a bigger one in the other container. Oh, okay. Wow. The giant burrowing cockroach, rhino roach. Yeah, he's trying macro, to burrow. Look at that. Panesthea rhinoceros. <laughs> oh, there we go. They have modified front legs, really adapted for digging, spiky and uh, not the most comfortable bug to hold. Not the least. True, true. So, yeah, two males. Yep. They have this scoop on the front of the pronotum. There's a good look. Kind of looks like a rhino horn from this angle here. Just juts up over the head. And uh, that's a lot of cockroach meat. <laughs> The rhino roaches don't care for, like, the freshly dropped leaves. They like them um, <clears throat> more brown and easy to crumble up. Um, I think it's just easier for them to eat it that way, and they, they prefer it. If I put a leaf in there that is too, too green, they're not going to touch it. Here's our lovely oak tree. Supplies endless amounts of leaves for the rhino roaches. Over the summer, Peter and I were at the greenhouse and we heard probably the loudest noise of all time. And uh, a big oak branch uh, fell off the tree. I don't even know if you can call that a branch. It's huge. Um, and there, uh, there's the remains. Peter's been cutting it up and using it uh, for firewood. Well, I just walked all over the yard there. And now there's one sitting right there. And I do have to ask, have you booped your boopadon today? Boop. <laughs> all right, as usual, nothing is scripted. I don't even know what I'm going to say <laughs> next. Show them the container right here. This is a container that we are repurposing. Jesse and Courtney gifted this to us when they moved from Arizona because the moving truck was full and they used to have a reptile in here of some kind. I believe Courtney, Jesse's wife, Jesse from Shapes and Nature, I believe she made this tank. She did. And, and weren't there frogs in there? Uh, that sounds about right. Amphibians. <laughs> um, we're going to make this for a pair of rhino roaches. And 
We're just using some basic organic soil on the bottom. Got a little bit of sand in here. Just gonna kind of mix it all together. Try not to breathe those little uh, particles of sand, no matter what kind of sand it is. I'm always kind of conscious of that. It's worth mentioning. And a lot of this information comes from my good friend, Oren, Oren McMonagall. He wrote the books and he has successfully raised more generations of this species probably than anybody else in the United States for sure, and perhaps in the history of the hobby. I don't know what generation he is on, but the ones that I reproduced back in 2018, was it? Yep. Um, those ones originally came from Oren, and these ones that we'll be putting in here, I guess, are the uh, grandchildren of ones that I got from him. So we're gonna do this tank a little differently than we do a tank for nymphs. And in a nymph tank where the immatures are, we do a half inch to three quarters of soil. And the reason for that is that over time, hobbyists have figured out that the babies will have trouble molting. The immatures will have some difficulty molting if the substrate is too deep. They can get kind of lost in it if you don't have the substrate just right. If it were loose, they might be thrashing around and have a little trouble if they got buried or something in exiting their exoskeleton. But this is going to be an adult tank here. And so we're actually going to make it a little bit deeper than we otherwise would so that the female can sort of hollow out a little cavern for herself to have her babies and she may feel more secure under that setting. So this is a slightly different kind of tank than the ones we showed you earlier where our adults have matured in the last year or so. So specifically setting up a rhino roach breeding tank here. So I'm gonna go a little bit deeper with the substrate. So you can see what I'm doing in here. Okay, so there was about a two inch gap between this stuff, the bottom of it right here, and the bottom of the tank. I'm compacting it in there with hopes that the females will build a burrow in this corner back here. And a little shallower up front here, but nice and deep back there. And then this will serve as a roof for the cave, the bottom of this, so that it can't collapse down on top of them when they build their burrow. And with that, we're gonna add in some leaves. So again, this is mainly what they eat and we'll supplement them with a few other things. We sometimes add insect jellies in, carrots, bits of apple, fish food pellets, Part of the fun in keeping roaches and isopods and millipedes is putting different sorts of foods in, maybe leftover table scraps from dinner, and seeing what they'll nibble on. So. Hey you, over here yowling. The runt. The runt has been left behind by the mother cat and the others. Poor thing. Do you love it, Kelsey? No, it's so sad when she's crawling. I meant, do you love the runt? Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm doing over here is hollowing out. It is helpful in a lot of cases for the keeper more than for the pet if you suggest a burrow. And so I want to be able to see what the mother roach is doing in there if she has babies. And so I hollowed out this section. I'm going to take this razor blade and clean off the glass a little bit. But this will be our sort of our peaking spot here to see what's going on. And we have suggested the burrow to her. She will hopefully modify it in a way that makes sense to her. And this will otherwise be her perfect place to have babies. All right, what are you doing now? Adding in some bark. This isn't cork bark, it's oak bark hmm. from trees in the yard. It's important that this is on the bottom of the tank because the roaches will sometimes, like turtles, flip themselves up on their backs and look at those hands. 
It's working hands. <laughs> Flip themselves onto their backs and they will wear themselves out over the course of a day or two if you're not looking in the tank regularly enough. And they can actually tire themselves to death. And so by having a textured surface like this that they can hold on to on the surface, it allows them to right themselves if they flip over. Very important care tip. Yeah, she looks good. All right. There they go. The rhino roaches. Warren and Astrid. <laughs> what? <laughs> Warren and Astrid Buffett. Do you know why? Tell me. Because... Rhino roaches are always a solid investment. You crack yourself up. <laughs> we don't name most things, and I just made that up. But do we have any bug that's named besides every Jerusalem cricket being named mammal? <laughs> uh, we have Bunny the Texanus. That's right. The Oedipus Texanus. That's right. All right. Exploring. Yep. The first few moments in their new home. And look where oh. she's going. Look where she's going. She was kind of heavy. That's the spot. That's the spot. She'll find it again, even if she backs out now. Everybody here on YouTube, you guys need to remind us to post updates about these. So room temperature is fine for them. Kelsey's adding in some moisture. They tolerate a lot of dryness. They have a really thick cuticle. And the foods that they eat, like carrots and apples, will help to hydrate them as well. A little bit of burrowing there, maybe. She's very curious about the burrow that you made. Yeah, I suspect that... Um, the bright light, which we're not going to keep up there all the time. Certainly won't keep it on all the time. I suspect that they'll want to go back into that darker recess at some point. But, I don't know. Mother knows best. She may burrow in the opposite corner, want to do things her way. But, hoping that we're going to be able to keep an eye on her through that corner back there. I have questions for you. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that hat. Oh, my cockroach hat? Yeah. My Madagascar hissing cockroach hat. Where did it come from? Uh, the Bronx Zoo. They and do uh, a Valentine's Day thing every year where you donate money and you get a cockroach named after whoever whoever you love. And they'll sometimes send you a beanie. And Or socks. What did you name the cockroach? Toot. A Madagascar hissing cockroach named Toot. Yeah. Gromphodorina portentosa. How appropriate. They make that sound. Can we, <laughs> can we hear you do a, a hissing cockroach sound? Yeah, come here. No, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's not scared. Ooh. They match. More hissing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lizard on the floor. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> you poor thing. Let's take you out to the sun. You poor little guy. I don't think you want to admit it, but I think that maybe you like me.
All right, I got some styrofoam options. So let's get started. All right, that looks pretty cozy if you ask me. We got one door here, another door here. That way, if the predator comes, they can escape out the other door. All right, got the towel in there. So cozy, gonna put the lid on and hope that they use it tonight. 